What's up everybody, Paul Hickey here with NoOffSeason.com. I'm happy collecting and I hope you are too. And today I'm here to talk to you about a little sports card strategy called cross grading. You may already be familiar with this, but the concept is that you buy a card that's already graded by a company in a slab with the intention of sending it to a different grading company to have them crack the slab regrade it and put it in their slab. Now, why would you wanna do this? You would wanna do this if you have a card graded by a lower tier grading company, say it's a Gem Mint 10 according to a lower tier grading company, and you wanna buy this card and send it to a higher tier grading company like PSA, for example, and see what they would grade it. And so I did this exact thing just a few months ago with a Michael Jordan 1990 Skybox card that I bought from Facebook Marketplace, which is really neither here nor there, but I did get it off of Facebook Marketplace from a legit seller. I don't think the seller was trying to scam me, but here's what happened. So I got this Gem Mint 10 Michael Jordan 1990 Skybox card that I've now pulled up on my screen next to me. And the grade is a Gem Mint 10. Now the grading company is Gem Grading Inc. And as you can see here, the card looks to be in amazing condition. And this is the picture that my father-in-law took of the card and sent it to me when it arrived at his house. I live in Spain, he lives in the United States, and he helped me receiving some cards that I ordered from sellers in the United States. And then a friend of mine helped me with a cross-grading submission to PSA. So here's what happened. I got super excited when PSA sent me the grading update on this card. Uh, it happened relatively quickly. I submitted the card at the end of February. PSA had it graded by May, uh, mid-May. So in mid-May, it had already moved through the entire process. And so I got super excited. And as you can see here on my screen right now, I got a update from PSA and got really excited to see what the grade would be. Now the grade came back as N1 evidence of trimming. So what does this mean? This means basically PSA has already shipped the card back to me and I haven't seen it yet. It's at my father-in-law's house. I'm gonna see it in a couple of weeks when I return to the United States with my family for the summer. But my, ex my expectation is that this thing is just in a uh, card saver um, with no grade, no slab. Basically it's worthless. And so the moral of the story here is when you think that you can make several hundred dollars off of a cross grading submission, an easy submission from a lower tier grading company, think again, because this gem grading company is an example of a company that will grade altered cards and slab them, give them the top possible grade and send them back. And so did I get screwed over? Yes. Did I get scammed? Not necessarily. I don't think the person on Facebook Marketplace necessarily knew that they were giving me a trimmed card. I think that they could have bought it secondhand off of someone else. But yeah, the person who submitted this to Gem trimmed the card. And so if you're out there wondering, should I really send my cards into PSA to get graded? Can I just send them into a lower tier grading company? I would say absolutely not. I would also be very wary of buying slabbed cards from lower tier grading companies because they have been known to incorrectly grade cards that have been altered or that are just flat out counterfeit. And so you need to be very, very careful. Um, moving forward, I'm not gonna purchase any more of these slabbed cards from any company other than PSA, BGS, SGC, CSG, probably HGA. I'm probably not gonna purchase any other slabbed card from any other grading company. And I'm definitely not gonna submit any cards to any other grading company than the ones I just mentioned because they have been proven to correctly grade cards. I'm actually thankful, I'm not upset. I'm not upset with PSA at all. I'm thankful that they graded my card correctly. It's a good lesson learned for all collectors and investors that the grading company that you submit your cards to does matter. 
And um, although I was ultimately disappointed with the N1 evidence of trimming, I'm probably gonna get this card back in a very underwhelming fashion in a card saver. Hey, at least I got a free card saver out of the deal. Um, I did spend, just so you know, I did spend $60 on the card itself and $64 for PSA to cross grade the card and ship the card back to me. So $64, was PSA's total charge. $60 was what I bought the slabbed card for. What I thought was gonna happen was that PSA was gonna grade this a 10, because I thought it was a legitimate, authentic Michael Jordan, unaltered 1990 Skybox card. And I thought I was gonna get a PSA 10 back, which is worth about $400 to $500 as of this publishing of this video. Um, instead, I am out about $124. I, I basically spent $124 for a card saver, hopefully. So uh, world's most expensive card saver, but um, this is what happens when you're in the game and I'm still excited. I've got some other submissions to PSA and I hope that they go better. I hope this video was helpful for you. Definitely subscribe to the channel, please, and definitely drop a comment below. I'd love to know what you think about this video and about my experience. Let me know if you've had an experience like this and what you did about it. Thanks so much for watching the video. I'm Paul Hickey with NoOffSeason.com. I'm happy collecting. I want you to be happy collecting too because there is no off-season in the hobby. Have a great day.